Hi everyone, and welcome to how to create a grunge photo effect in Adobe Photoshop. Now, before we begin with the tutorial, you'll need to download these three assets, the photo, the ink splash, and the watercolor image. And you'll find links to download each of these images in the description below. So to start off, we're going to open up the watercolor image and we're going to want to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. So to do this, let's go to image, then go to image rotation and select 90 degrees clockwise like so. And then you'll end up with an image that looks like this. And from here, we're going to desaturate this. So go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. And we're going to lower the saturation by minus 100 to give us this black and white image here like that. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and use the move tool here. And we're going to want to double click on the layer to make this into a layer. And we want to move this a little bit down like so to create a new layer underneath. And let's fill the layer underneath with white. Cool. Now we're going to go to the bottom of our layers panel here, and we want to select a new adjustments layer. So let's just click down here and select posterize. And we want to set the level here to eight, like so. And then make sure that this layer here is set above our image to give us this nice grungy look for our watercolor. Now let's create a new adjustment layer here. And this time we want to choose gradient. Now let's create a linear gradient here by clicking on the gradient bar. And we want to make it go from dark red to white. So let's click on this color stop here and then choose a color by clicking on the color box here. And the color we're going to use is 901026, which is this dark red color. And then click OK. And then for the last color here, we want to make sure that it's set to white. And then we also want to make sure that the opacity here is set to 100, like so. Click OK. And click OK again. And now let's set the layer blend mode to soft light, like so. Excellent. Next, we're going to go into our photo image here, and we're going to create a rough selection around our subject. Now to do this, we're going to use the quick selection tool, which is W on the keyboard, and then simply just click and select parts of the image that you want to cut out. So press Control Z on the keyboard. if We don't want that shadow. And this creates a quick rough selection of our subject here. And then for the rest of the image, we'll just use the lasso tool, which is L, and then just press and hold Shift on the keyboard to select the remaining parts here, like so. And then anything which is remaining like these white bands, we can also press and hold shift on the keyboard to select them and include them. Just roughly going around the outside of this sleeve and then making sure that we've selected the edges that we want. And then if we want to remove any edges here, like this little triangle here, we can press and hold Alt on the keyboard and then deselect this part of the image, like so. Excellent. And then once you're happy with your selection, just press Control X on the keyboard to cut it. And then we're going to move to our watercolor image here and then press control V on the keyboard to paste our image. And then using the move tool, we're just going to move this into place like so. 
Excellent. Now let's go ahead and make a new layer, move this underneath our subject, and then we're going to use the lasso tool here just to create a nice abstract shape around our person. Just roughly going around the outside of the subject like so. It doesn't have to be accurate. And then once you've done that, we'll use the paint bucket tool, which is a G on the keyboard. Make sure you've selected a white color and then fill it. Excellent. Now to add some grunge to the subject. So for this, we'll need to use a filter. So select the subject layer here, and then we're going to go to filter, filter gallery. And then we're going to use an artistic filter. So select artistic, and then we're going to select film grain. And now from here, we're going to use the following settings. So the grain, we're going to set this to zero. The highlight area, we're going to set this to five. And for the intensity, we'll set this at 10. Once you've done that, we can also preview how our image looks over on the left here. And then once you're happy, just simply press OK to apply it. Excellent. Now this first pass of this filter allowed us to create more contrast and intensity for our subject. Now let's go ahead and go back to the same filter again. So go to filter, go to filter gallery, and then select film grain again. And this time we're going to use these new settings here. So grain, we're going to set to seven. Highlight, we're going to set this to three. And the intensity, we're going to move this down to three. And then here you'll see how that affects our photograph on the left, like so. Once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click OK again to apply it. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and colorize our subject. So to do this, make sure that we've selected our subject layer here. We're going to right click on this and we're going to select blending options. From here, we're going to select gradient overlay. And then we're going to select a blend mode of overlay and an opacity of 70%. And then here, if we click on the gradient bar, we're going to edit this gradient bar here to create this sort of copper like effect. So the first color, we're going to double click on the color stop here and we're going to use a color code of 9D440A, which is this brown color here. Then move your mouse underneath the gradient bar so that it becomes this hand pointer. And we're going to click here to add a, another color stop. Double click on the color stop. And we're going to add a new color, which is FDD7C0, which is this lighter brown color here. And then we're going to create a, another color stop, which is just around where this hand here is. And then we're going to use the same brown color, which is 9D440A. Click OK. And then for the final color stop here, we're going to use the lighter color. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then we can paste this color code here like so. And then once you're happy with the way this looks, go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to change the angle of this to minus 90. And then click OK. Excellent. Next, let's go ahead and color in the shirt. Now to do this, we want to create a new layer on top of our subject layer. Right click on this 
and we want to select create clipping mask like so and then we're going to use the brush tool and let's go ahead and select a red color for this so the color we're going to use is d14456 and then just use a hard round brush to just color in the red shirt like so, just roughly. And then let's go ahead and set the blend mode of this to color, just down here. Excellent. And then we can also use the eraser tool here just to erase off parts of the color that we don't want on our subject, like so. Excellent. Next, we're going to right click on this layer here, select blending options. And then from here, we want to select a new gradient overlay. And with this gradient overlay, we want to make sure that the first color stop is set to white with an opacity of zero. And the second color stop is set to black with an opacity of 100%. Click OK. We want to set the opacity to 70%. Check reverse, check align with layer. Make sure it's at minus 90 degrees. And we want to set the scale to 150%. Click OK to apply. Next, let's select a new adjustment layer here. And this time we're going to select levels. And then we're going to right click on this and we want to create a clipping mask like so. And from here, we're just going to play about with the levels here to make sure that the contrast is where we like it. So just move the arrows here like so, just to make our subject fit in with the background a little bit more. Next, we're going to go back to our ink splash here. We're going to use the marquee tool here and just select our splash like so. And then from here, we're going to go to edit and then select define brush preset to create our own splatter brush. So just name this splatter like so, click OK. And now we've got our splatter brush selected. Let's go back to our main image here. And we're just going to use this splatter brush on a layer behind our subject. So let's create a new layer like so. And then all we have to do is create a splatter just behind it. So let's make sure that we've selected a white color for our brush and then just stamp behind our subject like so. Excellent. Next, let's add some text for our image. So to do this, let's create a new layer on top of everything. Use the marquee tool here. I'm just going to create a long rectangle and then use the fill paint bucket tool to fill it like so. And then we're going to use the text tool and then just click on top of our rectangle to create some text. We're just going to enlarge this a little bit like so. Double click on the font here and then let's choose a font to use. So I'm going to use a font called Mark Twins, which is over here. And then just type in whatever text you want. So I'm going to type in grunge effect. Like so. And then we can also adjust the size of our rectangle to better fit the size of our text. And once you've done that, let's go ahead and select both the text and the rectangle here. Press Control T on the keyboard to transform. I'm just going to rotate it slightly 
like that. Excellent. We can also enlarge it. Now to tie the whole look together, let's go back to our original grunge watercolor layer here. And we're going to duplicate this twice. So right click, duplicate layer, and then right click, duplicate layer again. Let's select both of these layers and move them all the way up to the top of our layers here. Just going to hide the first one. Select one of these layers and we're going to right click and then create a clipping mask. And now we're going to set the layer blend mode to lighten like so. And that will add the effect to our text. Excellent. Now let's go to our second watercolor layer here. Let's make sure that it's not hidden. And now let's set the blend mode here to soft light. Excellent. Now this helps tie the whole image together and also makes it a little bit more grungy. For ready-made flyer templates, you can also try using Placeit. Choose from a wide range of graphical styles and genres to suit your project. Each flyer template can be customized to your liking by changing the different graphics and by changing the colors and also choosing a different font and also uploading your own logos. In the search bar at the top here, you can also type in grunge to find something that looks similar to the project in this video. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you had fun with this project and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.